fertility rate, um, it's interesting that for, for many years it's been recognized that you can die of a broken heart. But it was only relatively recently that this has actually been established as being valid. A study that was carried out some years ago demonstrating that the greatest increase in mortality takes place during the first six months after bereavement. We were able to tag the central health registry records of all the widowers in England and Wales over the age of 55 and follow them up over a 10-year period. And you can see that, that beyond the fourth year, the actual death rate, by comparison with married men of the same age, actually falls below the expected level. And what this seems to suggest is that these people would have died anyway, but what the bereavement has done is bring forward a death that would have occurred sometime within the next 10 years. Do you follow me? Um, when you look at the causes of death, uh, the, the commonest cause, and you ask people, you know, what do you think bereaved people um, will die from? And some of them say suicide. Suicides do increase, but they don't count for very much of this. The vast bulk of it is deaths from heart disease, which of course is the commonest cause of death anyway, but it shows a sharp increase by comparison with other uh, causes of death. Now, looking at psychi psychiatric conditions, um, practically anything that you can name, any psychiatric vulnerability that you have may be aggravated by bereavement. Bereavement is a major stress. In terms of statistics, various studies indicate that uh, anxiety disorders, panic syndromes, major depression are the three major, uh, biggest, most frequent non-specific disorders. People usually think of depression first because they, they associate depression with loss. But in fact, fear and anxiety play a major part, probably slightly more frequent than depression and often coexisting with it. Comorbidity is the rule rather than the exception in these cases. Alcoholism, well, if you've always been a heavy drinker when your wife dies, you may well take to the bottle in a big way and end up with an alcoholic psychosis or something similar. Uh, it illustrates quite well how vulnerable people have the illness and the problems that they're most um, vulnerable to. Looking more closely at the specific um, psychiatric problems, everyone tends to associate post-traumatic stress disorder with, with stresses of all kinds. In point of fact, it's rather less common than the more complicated grief syndromes following bereavements. Although, where it's a very traumatic type of bereavement, i.e. a situation associated with intense fear, helplessness or horror, people have, have maybe witnessed the death of a loved child or a car smash or something dramatic and unexpected, then post-traumatic stress disorders are not uncommon. Um, complicated grief reactions can occur in a wide variety of circumstances, which we'll talk more about. In the early days of bereavement research, the emphasis was placed on the dangers of delaying grief, I think largely under psychoanalytic influence, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, in point of fact, today, we see relatively few delayed reactions. There are a few, but much more common are the very intense grief going on for abnormally long periods of time, so-called prolonged grief disorders. 